Libra 29, Humanity, Seeking to Bridge the Span of Knowledge. In some ways, our evolution, our life evolution, is a path of bridging the gap between the unknown and the known. And the way to develop knowledge, there is only one way, and that's through experience. We can have ideas and concepts and so on which we think about, but unless we actually ground it through experience, it's not knowledge. And most assuredly, it's not wisdom. People who think they understand, well, they're clever. But people who really understand are wise. And we're looking at the, the difference between those two things, perhaps, the, the development of wisdom rather than cleverness and information and, and so on. So, in order to live a life where we develop more knowledge, do we have to expand our range of experience? We have to try new things and meet new people, read new books, and so on. And that's not enough, however. Wisdom can only really unfold within us like a flower unfolds its aroma and beauty when there is an alignment and, and the wisdom that we seek is really the demonstration of that alignment. And by alignment we mean the bits of ourselves all kind of lined up. We, we've got a physical body, we've got a heart, we've got a mind, we've got a soul, and, and they, they've got different purposes, different agendas, different ways of being. And they don't always tie up. In most people, they're really not tied up. And if you see somebody who's really out of kilter, um, something's wrong. Either they're emotionally unstable or passionate when they shouldn't be or, or depressed when they shouldn't be or, or um, their physical body is showing signs of abuse or their mind is, is confused and anxious and, and silly. They, they, they make silly inferences from facts. And th this is actually the case pretty much all over the world for all people. Very few people live in alignment. And we must, for us to develop further on our spiritual evolution, we must find a measure of alignment. It, it's not realistic to hope to be in alignment all of the time. That would be the demonstration of a great level of realization. So we're looking for a measure of that, see if we can access it now and again when we need to. And when we, we, we are, when we are in alignment, we're in the zone. That's what being in the zone means, I think. <clears throat> and there's no discrepancy within you. Everything that you're doing is aligned in the same direction. So <clears throat> if we can find that way of being in alignment, and demonstrate it in a, in a physical form, so that the physical body's tied up with that, then we're showing wisdom. One of the most obvious things to say about how to find alignment is the process of recognition, knowing again who you are. And very often, self-recognition is only really grounded and, and made powerful and usable when it's married up by the recognition by someone. And it might even be the other way around. Somebody might recognize you first, and, and then you become who you are. So it can happen first uh, within or first by recognition by somebody, but it seems to need to happen. Even if we feel really amazing ourselves and nobody else notices, that's not enough. We have to demonstrate ourselves first to someone and then to many to be fully recognized. And that process of recognition awakens our potential to a new dimension. Uh, we become much better able to do many things all at the same time. I mean, Sorry, all at the same time we become better able to do many things. So we suddenly become more capable once we are fully recognized. <coughs> Excuse me. And in that state of 
a higher self-recognition, we, we piece things together better. We see the pattern in life. We join the dots. Now, this is what turns experience into knowledge, joining the dots. In other words, we, we see a load of dots, um, phenomena, scenarios, explanations w without the full picture. And, and we, we get bits of the picture. And it, it comes to us a, a bit like fog is clearing. We don't suddenly go up a step and then another step in our evolution of wisdom. But the fog just clears in some way as we see the picture unfolding from the dots. We suddenly kind of have a eureka experience at some point, but it, it is preceded by this fog clearing. And we can feel it. It, it, it does have a feeling quality. There's this ah, sort of a like a release, as though the mind has been tightened, and now it's loosened. It's a bit like that. And sometimes, if that happens quickly, um, it's like having a, a, a tight knot un, undone. Like if, if you're wearing a necktie for a man, and, and your you, 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 you tie is really tight, because you've got to go out to show off how disciplined you are in society's terms of dress code. And you come home and you take your tie off, or perhaps with a woman, she takes off her tight shoes or, or, or the equivalent. <sighs> the, 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 the evolution of knowledge sometimes feels a little bit like that for the head. Like, ah, oh, yeah, it, it's a release. And that shows us where knowledge is. It is beyond our anxiety, beyond our tension. It's, it's like if, if we could just relax into knowledge, then we would see how the dots all join together anyway. Um, it's, it's there for us to know. It wants to be known. It, it's, it's not hiding. It's hidden, but it's not hiding. Um, now, we become, then, the measure of wisdom. Insofar as the way we are, who we are, when we're in full alignment, expressing our full potential in the right place with the right people, when we're doing everything we possibly could in this lifetime, then we become the measurement of wisdom. In other words, does it work in practice? Can we bring our spiritual sense of self to bear upon the world in a workable way? That's the measure that we're looking for. We need to make it work. A lot of people seem to think that it's, it's, it's okay just to know things, that someone teaches you, you reorganize into your particular way of thinking, and you put that on a bit of paper, and somebody says, yeah, 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 that's good, examinations. That's, that doesn't do it. You, you, you've got to do more than that. You've got to build a life based on your wisdom. You've got to choose your friends based on your wisdom and your activities and what you say yes to, and what you say no to, and you, you've got to create your life fully out of your wisdom. Why would you not? If you know what's right, why would you not do it? Can you not do it? Well, therefore it's not right. Do you not want to choose to do it? Well, therefore it's not right. Our wisdom is who we are, and how we are, and any difference between what we think is a good thing to do um, what we're doing, that, that difference needs to be spanned. That's the difference between the unknown and the known that we're talking about in this degree. And you might think you know stuff, but unless you're actually showing it in, in the way you live, then you don't know it. And when you do know it, there's a huge temptation to get egotistical about that. We have to be careful. Egoism in the, sen in the sense of loving oneself and if you don't love yourself, well, why should anybody else? So that kind of egoism, that's healthy in moderation. But egotism, when you think that because you know more than others, that's the end of wisdom, typically. It's just a distortion. 
egotism is a false understanding, like I, I am more important than anyone else. It's a false understanding. There are contexts in which that's true, and certainly in certain realms of knowledge. Yes, somebody who knows more than another is more important when a certain course of action is required. The one who knows more becomes more important for a little while, but not for a long while. And, and that actually diminishes your ability to actualize your wisdom. So we have to be a bit careful about um, getting, getting lost. But when we do have this wisdom, then we can ask questions. And it is not the answer of a question that we're looking for. It's the disappearance of the question. There's food for a great deal of wisdom in that meditation. The difference between the answering of a question and the disappearance of a question is huge in life. We're not looking to find the answer, we're looking for to lose the question.